I read Andrew Motion's biography of Keats, and really I, I did it in a way to just broaden my own uh, knowledge of literature because I've always loved prose, but I've always felt less comfortable with poetry. So um, I was just completely unprepared for how passionate and how intimate the story was because dispersed throughout the story were extracts from his letters to her and they were um, so amazing. And it was incredible to think, oh, you know, this is the very same thing that um, I'm reading now that she was reading 150 years ago. The ideas that Keats brought up in you know, his letters were incredibly sophisticated for me. And, you know, it did remind me of the kinds of conversations that I would have with my flatmates and my friends when I was younger, or, or even still now, you know, um, because Keats, as I mentioned before, sort of wandered into ideas about life, Buddhism, the, you know, what death means, what it is to have a soul. I think, you know, I, those sorts of conversations or wanderings, I, I think are great, you know, and everybody does them or should be doing them or, you know, can enjoy doing it. And, and, you know, even reading him now, um, one commentator said there's hardly any of his theories that seem ridiculous now. All of them hold true to some point or another. I wasn't concerned that this film would be unavailable to people that don't know poetry because I think that the great thing about the uh, story of Fanny and Keats is that anybody who's ever wanted to be connected deeply to another person can respond to the story. In fact. I felt encouraged because I felt my reaction to their story was very strong and um, uncritical, like loving. All you can do is say, I've fallen in love with this story of these two and their character and I love the way Keats expresses himself in his letters. So um, I'm just doing my version. <laughs> <laughs>